giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome back to Infimidation, where we talk the best robots from the best region in all of FIRST. Recapping four absolutely stacked Week 5 events, and also Shepard, and previewing our final week of district events for the 2019 season. Uh, while the events this week don't have the firepower of a Kentwood or a Marysville, these Week 6 events will be hotly contested as teams fight for these last few district points to earn their way to the best competition in all of FRC, the Michigan State Championship. So let's talk robots. Reporting for FIRST Updates now, I'm PJ. I'm Nick Jr. I'm Mike. I'm Sky. So let's jump right into it and talk about the first event we are recapping this week. PJ, what do you have for us? All right. So up at Shepard, uh, finals featured Alliance 2 versus Alliance 4. Alliance 2 consisting of 1188, the Ravens from Royal Oak, 3572, Wavelength from Norton Shores, and 6963, Blood, Sweat, and Gears from Remus. Uh, Alliance 4 was Team 5084, Team Fridgebot from Corona, 4004, Mars Rovers from Muskegon, and 6533, Beaver Tech from Beaverton. Uh Number the Alliance two would take the edge in that event after um, after the way was paved a bit easier by eight taking out number one in the finals. Chairmans would go to twenty nine fifty nine the Robotarians from Coloma. EI would go to five hundred three Frog Force from Novi, giving them that a uh, culture wombo combo of the Chairmans and EI in the same season. This is Wavelength's first event win in team history, so congratulations to them. And uh, interestingly enough, no rookie All Star was given out at this event. Uh, there was only one rookie. They gave him rookie inspiration instead of all-star. Uh, so at least they got something, I guess. So kicking it over to Marysville. Nick, what happened over there? Yeah, uh, Marysville ended up being an interesting one. Uh, I know a lot of teams were eyeing this event out uh, once all the events got released. So uh, f uh, in the finals, we had the first alliance and the uh, third alliance. Uh, first alliance being captained by 3452 Green Engineers out of Bering Springs. Uh, first pick was Team 217 Thunder Chickens out of Utica. And around off the number one alliance was Team 7192 Blue Thunder Nears out of Croswell, Lexington. Uh, the finalists consisted of the alliance number three, led by Team 302 Dragons out of Lake Orion. Uh, first pick was Team 1684 Chimeras out of Lapeer. And oh, the... I'm sorry. First pick was 494 The yep, Martians. Four, 494 The Martians. Just <laughs> I can't do anything today. And to round it off was Team 7491 Cyber Soldiers out of Burton. Uh, Chairman's was taken by 1189 The Gearheads out of Gross Point, and EI was taken by Team 302 The Dragons. Uh, the number one alliance did win in two matches, although they were close. Uh, Rookie All Star was taken by Team 7481 Cyber Soldiers, was also uh, again out of Burton. Um, some interesting points, uh, I think, in my opinion, at least. Uh, Chickens really stepped it up uh, in Marysville here, coming off a 36-point performance at Kettering. Uh, the Green Engineers also had an interesting pick in the Alliance selection for the first Alliance. Uh, a lot of people didn't see that one coming, but it does look like it paid off. And Team 7491 completely slept through the Alliance selection, ending up all the way back to three and assisted them in their finalist appearance. Uh, Mike, what do you have for us at Alpina 2? So Alpina 2 went exactly how we predicted it last week. Uh, the Robo Jackets seeded first, 35-38, picked the Killer Bees, 33, and 70-84, the Hillman uh, Pyrobots. They faced off against the number two alliance in finals, 55-05, Volt Squared from Alpina, 107, Team Robotics from Holland, and 78-23, Huron Bots from Rogers City. Um, they, they swept it, and uh, it was the largest winning margin in Elims for... Uh, for any number one alliance, 42.66 average winning margin, uh, which is just ridiculous. Oh, Jesus. 35-38 um, did four solo rockets in qualifications, all of which had them level three climbing at the end. Um, and the chairmans went to 107, Team Robotics, giving them a cling bling of uh, finalists and chairmans. Rookie All-Star went to 78-23. Uh, um which 
uh, and EI went to 28-34 Bionic Blackhawks, uh, which was, was pretty predictable because they're Hall of Fame now. Uh, Troy, I, I, it's predictable, but also, like, strange. I've noticed this a few times in the years, too, like where 31-32 got EI the year after they went Hall of Fame, and I was like, I thought that wasn't supposed to happen for a while at least. But whatever. So uh, I'm going to talk about Troy real fast. Uh, finals featured, uh, you know, the predictable matchup of Alliance 1 versus Alliance 2. Uh, Alliance 1 consisting of 245, the Adam Bots, after, out of Rochester Hills, 910, the Foley Freeze, or uh, as they've been rebranded the as of today, the Foley Flare, out of Madison Heights, and 6117, 6117 Wingspan out of Pontiac. Uh, Alliance 2 was 51, Wings of Fire, also out of Pontiac, 1718, the Fighting Pie, out of Armada, and 4768, the Comets, out of Detroit. Alliance 2 would end up taking it in three matches uh, after a controversial ending. And a re- uh, there was, at the end of Finals 3, there was talk and, that there was about to be a replay uh, due to the cam- the, the, the um, display, the time display, display going out. Yeah, the audience display going out so that the uh, time display went out. So there was talk of that being a... Uh, Replay, ultimately, it was decided it was not because you have access to that information on your driver station and all that. So it wasn't deemed to have affected the match enough to warrant a replay. So Alliance 2 uh, got to go home with the gold. Chairmans went to 1718 Fighting Pie out of Armada. So that's that double gold cling bling for them. EI went to 226 to Hammerheads out of Troy. Uh, another culture cultural wombo combo after their chairmans went at Detroit a couple weeks ago. And then Rookie All-Star went to 7597, Team Horsepowered out of Frazier. A uh, couple interesting points I noticed. 245 misses. Uh, the chairman's, 245 has gone to three districts and hasn't gotten chairmans at any of them. Uh, this is the first time without a chairman's award since 2016. Um, that's after they've won it at the state level a couple times. So I was super interested. Uh, it was very interesting to see them not get a chairman's award this year. Um, and then something else that was interesting, if you were following it, 910's ranking score in this event was very strange for those following it. At one point on Friday, they had a ranking score of 2.6 through five matches. That in and of itself doesn't sound super strange. Um, but until you looked and you saw that their record through five matches was two wins and three losses. And so in, the, so in those five matches, two of those three losses were two ranking point losses where they completed a rocket and got the hab points but still lost the match. So they, were, they had a 2.6 ranking score with a record of two and three. And then their whole weekend was kind of like that, where they would, I think there was another match where they got a rocket and lost the match. So, so they're right. It was very strange for them to end up with the ranking score they did. So it just goes to show just what these points, how they can change. Uh, and now we're going to move into probably what was the most anticipated and most watched event in all of FIM this year. Uh, Sky, go ahead and tell us about East Kentwood. Yeah. East Kentwood. <clears throat> Absolutely stacked event, and uh, maybe a bit of a preview to what we're going to be seeing at uh, States here in a few weeks, but uh, everyone knew that going in, uh, and after the first day of quals, there were kind of real four teams that were jostling around uh, in the top eight, kind of for those uh, top four spots, uh, 54, 60, 27, 67, 20, 54, and 67. Uh, alliance selections were were smooth with no, decline, no declines, uh, so the top seed alliance consisted of 5460 Strike Zone from Lapeer, 2767 Strike Force from Kalamazoo, and 4482 ID Robotics also from Kalamazoo. Uh, this brought uh, 67 Hot into the second seed where they picked up Rush and uh, 5675 the Wirecats. Uh, the third seeded alliance uh, really managed to get things going, uh, and that consisted of Team uh, 2054 Tech Vikes from Hopkins, 1918 the NC Gears from Fremont, and uh, 4956 the RoboSharks from Whitehall. Uh, the fourth seed alliance was comprised of 4967 that one team, 4362 Gems, and 3875 Red Storm. So the real the big kind of meat of what came out of this event other than being completely stacked uh, was the finals matches and they were some real jaw droppers uh, the number three alliance took it in two but it was by no means a blowout uh, finals one had a score of 114 for the number one alliance to 117 to the number three alliance no penalties 
and I believe that's a world record for the highest combined score at the moment. Um, the second finals match was a little bit more tame. It was still 102 to 115. So the number one alliance put up over 100 twice and lost three yeah. matches, which is yeah. insane. And that just really goes to show what we're going to be uh, looking at here in a little bit with uh, the top 10. Uh, so... Chairman's went to uh, 3875 Red Storm Robotics out of Kentwood. EI was uh, 5460 Strike Zone, so that made, gave them the uh, lovely cling bling. Uh, rookie All Star was uh, 7689 WMC Robotics from Muskegon. So this was an absolutely incredible event that had an, a lot of depth and it showed. So uh, I was up in the stands. Uh, Mike, how is this event from behind the glass? So it was it was amazing to me to see how different uh, the Rocket RP, how big of a difference that makes in qualification versus elimination matches because defense changes completely. Uh, you were seeing a lot of teams park in front of the Rocket to just block people from from getting those points, and it would really shut down two high scoring teams. Uh, and where one team could try to solo a Rocket but not have defense against two strong teams and almost win the match. Um, or prevent them from from just racking up points. Whereas in Elims, it doesn't work because there's another rocket, and you don't actually care if you finish it. Uh, and that that seemed to play into alliance selection a little bit because you saw some defense spots getting picked, and that left some high scoring, really good robots on the table for the the last few seeds to grab or the the last few picks. And I think that's what really led to this triple offense strategy. Um, but now it's time to talk about our uh, our FIM top ten. Top 10 teams in Michigan from last week's competition voted on by you, the fun community, in the FRC Top 25 polls. Well, we will save where any of these teams finished in the overall Top 25. We will discuss the Top 10 vote-getters in FEM. Uh, for the first time this week, we have, uh, we have voters able to identify themselves by the region they're from. And so FEM voter rankings are listed in parentheses next to the team name on the slide. Uh, what are everybody's thoughts on this? We had, uh, we had Killer Bees coming in first, 33, 54, 60, number two. Uh, 2767, number three, 2054, number four, 3538, number five, 1918, number six, 217 and seven, 67 and eight, 27 and ninth, and 302 and 10. One thing I noticed was, um, don't get me wrong, 33 is great, but um, I think 2054 might actually be the rest, best robot in FIM this year. I know some other people disagree with that. Uh, but just the amount of points and the amount of rockets they've been able to score this season, I just think they're amazing. Uh, I think sixteen eighty four should be here. Um, a bad, a bad third, a bad third robot at Marysville really knocked them out at semis. Um, it really wasn't uh, their fault. Them and Krev should have made finals. They just made a a rough third robot pick. Um, I put three hundred two all the way above uh, two seventeen. Two seventeen was. Good, but not great. 302, super, super impressive at Marysville. They're doing some really cool things in Sandstorm, um, except for the match where they hit me uh, when I was wrestling. <laughs> but um, so that was less. I think that's yeah. a cool thing. <laughs> but that's sort of, so that's sort of my thoughts. Sky, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I'm going to kind of jump, uh, not to pick on 33 too much, um, <laughs> but I think they're slightly overrated here. I mean, they're, don't get me wrong, they're incredibly impressive, and they're finally smoothing a few things out. Um especially with that buddy climb on the horizon. Uh, hopefully we can uh, see that going. But uh, contrary to PJ, I'm going to go with 1918 on the top of FIM at the moment. Uh, just their mobility and their ability to deal with defenses is great. Yeah, and I, I wish we had seen more of that in calls because I would have picked them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, poor 5460, they're always a, a bridesmaid and never a bride. Um, they, they really deserve to win a gold medal this year. I'm hoping they'll get one. Um, that they really need their climb to work at MSC, uh, and and then I don't think they're really deserving of the number one rank because if you can't climb, you can't you can't compete in this game. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really want to see bees play at a at a more competitive event before we can really say they're they're not deserving of the one spot. Uh, they have one of the best hash placements there is. Um, they, their hashes don't come off, uh, which is something 5460 struggles with. Is sometimes their hatch placement is a little iffy. Um, and, and Rush really needs to get their hash game together. It, they, they looked really good Saturday morning. They played under defense really well, and then they completely didn't score hatches in Elims. Yeah, I mean, they had some matches that were absolutely amazing, and then they had some stuff that was lackluster. So uh, they need to work on getting that consistency down, but definitely a lot of potential there. 
Yeah, um, really quick so we can go back into the previews. Uh, I'm going to hop on PJ's bandwagon here and say that uh, 302 I definitely think should be higher on the list. Um, I was at Marysville also this weekend, and uh, I would probably put them above 217 um, right now on our top 10. Uh, so, Mike, if you want to go ahead and get started with Traverse City and previews. That's Sky. That's actually me. <laughs> sorry. You know what? Okay, oh, today's not my day. <laughs> All right. So up and on over to TC. Uh, there's a lot of young teams competing this weekend, uh, but there is some playoff experience in there. Uh, this is an event where definitely some of that young talent can hopefully kind of break through and make a little noise. Uh, now that 33 is taking a break and making it so that we're not talking about them constantly. Uh <laughs> This event is going to force some teams to step up a, up a bit. However, I fully expect uh, 36, 88 Norsemen uh, to rank number one. But if uh, other teams show up and stir the pot, it could be quite interesting. Yeah, anyone, uh, anyone showing up to uh, give an uppercut to the competition, one might say. <laughs> All right, we're just going to keep on moving. Uh, 1322 has already grabbed a chairman's at Kettering 1, so that leaves the easy favorite, the Petoskey Paladins, to take that home. So, uh... Nick, what are we looking at for Lansing? Yeah, uh, so Lansing is showing um, some interesting teams here. Uh, we see the second event of 3707 Techno Dogs, who came off uh, with a win at Milford. Uh, some other teams that are looking to be in the top 10 that I have down are 1504 Desperate Penguins, 2145 Hazmats, 3655 Tractor Technicians, and 4776 Scott Spots. Uh, one team that I think could be a definite dark horse and might uh, shock some people here is 7056, the fast team out of Fowlerville. Uh, they have a de I think they got a definitely uh, nice machine this year, and I'm uh, curious to see what comes out of them. Uh, Chairman's looks to be led by 4776, the Scott Spots. Uh, PJ, what do you got going on in Forest Hills? All right, uh, Forest Hills, almost a quarter of the teams are on their third play. Nine out of the 40 are playing for the third district. Um, for me, and I think a lot of people, all eyes are on 2075. Uh, it's time to see how Enigma plays against real competition. Because uh, up at LP, like they put Fresh up, like, they did five or six, <laughs> they did five or six rockets at um, Alpina One, and it was great. They seeded first, undefeated, all that fun stuff. But Alpina One was not, you know, a deep event. So it'll be interesting to see how they play up against the likes of like 2337, 2474, 3357, 910, uh, 4967. So there's a lot more teams here at Forest Hills, a lot of teams with a lot of mileage on their robots already. Um, so that's why I think all eyes are on 2075. Uh, other notables on their second event, so still playing for points, are 2474, who were winners at West Michigan, 3357, the Comets, the uh, home team, who were finalists at Gold Lake. And 6,002 uh, Zubotics were finalists at Lakeview. Uh, 2337 uh, engineers are looking to finally break out of semis at their first two district events. They've gotten bounced in semis. Uh, this would be, if they don't make it out of semis here at Four Sales, this would be their first year without a finalist or champion medal since 2013. So that'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to fix the issues they've been having. Uh, they as did finally break their finalist streak at Troy, though. Not in the way they wanted to, but. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> it, went, it went the wrong direction. But uh, so the uh, and then for chairman's competition, uh, if you were looking at classic favorites, 2619 and 4967 would probably be the most uh, storied chairman's contenders here. But neither have gotten a culture award this year. And they they're both on their third event. Uh, while newcomers to the culture scene who uh, 910 and 3357, who both got their first chairman's awards last year. Uh, they have both gotten an Engineering Inspiration Award already this year. So um, they those two might actually be the teams to beat. Although they are young in the Culture Award field, they do have – they've already won EIs this year. And so we'll see. It will be very interesting to see who gets that slot, to, uh, that automatic slot to ch uh, championships. So, uh, Nick, take us to the UP and tell us about LSSU. Yeah, so um, it does look like at Lake Superior State University uh, that all the robots competing here are at their second event. Um, it definitely looks to be the favorite here is 4391 BraveBots. Um, other teams that I'm looking to see in the mix would be 3537 Delta Force and Team 3602 RoboMoves. Um, I'm definitely looking for a lot of proven on Vola teams as not even half of them have placed in the top 15 at their first competitions this year. Uh, Chairman's looks like to be an open shot as 4337 Boyne City Blaze has already won. Um, again, I, I could see a new team here uh, coming to the culture scene. 
Um, and we're also looking as 5701 uh, won at uh, Lake Superior State last year, and they're looking to repeat. Uh, Mike, what do you got going on at Livonia? So Livonia doesn't have any robots that have won a banner yet this season. Uh, and no one is on their third play. It's all second plays. Hot 17... take, someone's going to get a banner. <laughs> uh, only Hot 17 take. of these, these robots have made elims at their first event, and only 10 of those is a captain or first pick. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of new blood here as far as getting in the competition. Um, robots to watch probably 548 is a is a big favorite. Um, 1076 Pi High from uh, Ann Arbor Pi High Samurai and 6861 the Tyros team from uh, Livonia were both finalists in week one together. Um, so they'll probably do well at the event. Um, 7553 looks really good at Milford. Uh, 1506 Metal Muscle. Um, and 3175 night vision probably all going to be competitive it's just going to come down to who made the most improvements from uh from their first event to um to this event chairman's will probably chairman's and ei um contenders are 548 1506 and 3175 i actually like for i'm gonna give a little shout out i think 3175 i'm gonna i'm gonna go out of my bold prediction for the week is that 3175 will earn a Kling Bling at Livonia. I don't know what the combination will be, but after seeing their robot play at Centerline, looking at the depth of competition at Livonia, I think that 3175 could take home two medals from Livonia. So I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on that or has their own bold predictions for the week, but that's mine. <laughs> well, let's talk about rocket predictions, right? Uh, okay. We had 11% of matches, was it, this week? Yeah, a little, little, little over 11%. Should have made Nick bet us. <laughs> yeah. Finally. Dude, I've given up on betting stuff. Yeah. yeah no but, point. But you don't have the same the same big-name teams playing in week six, so it's going to go back down, right? Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think I, East, uh, Kentwood, East Kentwood and Marysville had a huge tip. Yeah. That. What did we see, probably. seven at Marysville, PJ, yeah. something like that? Troy had five or six as well. Yeah, because so. I know 9-10 did a good amount, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, I think what Mike said, it's going to take a dip down this week. But, man, oh, man, States is going to be crazy. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I can't even imagine what's going to happen at States. Um, like Chad lots of defense. From, You're going to end up with teams yeah. parked in front of that rocket. Yeah, yep. I was going to say, defense is going to be people just locking down. Yeah, so. Parker uh, from 546, you just said in chat that they had actually soloed 10 uh, this weekend. Um, so... I did, I would imagine I'd, they, I'd see more out of them at States. Um, but, yeah, I think it'll take a dip down, but it's going to hype back up for sure. Oh, yeah. 5460 has the fastest solo rocket I've seen. Completely. They, I saw him on the practice field do it without doing anything in Sandstorm, and they had 41 seconds left in the match when the that rocket was. surprise me at all. Yeah. Which is, they're, they're insane. The grip yeah, by, by my count, it was 41 seconds as well. Um, yeah. I don't remember what match. It was partway through the day yeah. on Saturday. Do they, do they have a level three climb? I know uh, they didn't they, in the reveal they video. They do have a level three climb. Um, okay. They've had a lot of struggles with it. Okay. Because so. I, I know there wasn't one in their reveal video, so I wasn't sure if they'd added uh, it. Was, it was very much when I talked to him, I had to behind the bumpers. I don't know if that's going to show up, but uh, yeah. that, that was very much a, at the end of the season edition. Uh, okay. So they have a lot of bugs to, to sort out on that. They're getting there for but sure. Yeah, that's, but yeah, if they have that, that makes them even scarier if they can get those bugs out. Yeah, it, it's not the fastest in the world uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but yeah. uh, the times it's worked, it's it's been, well, I mean, it's been They ranked this, one but... at Kentwood without a level three climb. That's how yeah. fast they are. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I assumed that they had a level three climb. I didn't realize they got ten friggin' rocks. Well, you also have to realize how deep the climbers were at East Yeah, they were. There was, there was I mean, you guys picked up a robot that could get to level three as the 24th pick, so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to have to stop there and wrap the show up. Uh, so thank you to everyone who's watched, sent us questions and comments, and supported the show. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show. And that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. Be sure to click that little green follow button above and click the purple sub button to see if you maybe have a free Twitch Prime sub available. On behalf of myself, Nick Jr., Mike, Sky, and our fill-in producer for the night, Nick, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is Mouth of the South. We'll be here same time, same place next Monday for the recap of Lansing, Livonia, Traverse City, Forest Hills, and LSSU. Good night. 
We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.